Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to you. And uh, once again, I say it again, the kids gave some thank you cards. You're welcome to check them out after service. I'm going to leave them up here on this front seat. It's just a way of looking at what the impact that um, just giving a gift to a kid can have. Because we know from Proverbs chapter 22 and 6 that if you train up a child in the ways that they should go, the scripture says they won't depart from it. They may wander, they may stray, they may lose their mind for a period of time, but what's in them is going to come back. So that's so important. Well, praise the Lord today. As you, as you can tell, I don't want to make the focus all about my voice, but I did work it at the conference we attended, and I just praise the Lord like I, like I needed something. <laughs> Amen. I praise him like I needed something. So but today we're going to go into the word of God. And we're, and we're, that's a minor thing. I got a question for you. What's the point? What's the point? Why? Why do we go to church? Why do we do the things we do? Why do we read our Bibles? Why do we pray? Why do we sing songs of praise? Why do we do these different things? Hmm. Why do we try to love people? Why do we read our Bibles? Why do we try to live like Jesus? Have you ever thought about that and asked yourself, why am I doing this? Hmm. Well, I'm going to get you to thinking about this from this standpoint. Six months ago today, we had our first service. Six months ago. And on that day, I stood up and I cast the vision. And I did so because in Proverbs chapter 29 and 18, it says that where there's no vision, I'll wait for you to get there. I'm sorry, I just ran off. But in Proverbs chapter 29 and 18, that's where I want to start at today. And uh, that's what we'll be talking about is vision. And this is a six month refresher. Y'all ever have to do some job retraining on the job? They have to, you know, give you, they may have got a new machine or new this or new that and say, okay, we gotta have some training on that. This is a six month refresher just to remind us of some things that are important as we continue to move forward. So in Proverbs chapter 29 and 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish but happy is he who keeps the law let me pray father i thank you that we have the opportunity lord to hear your word that we have the opportunity to have a personal bible because for many 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 years lord believers didn't have their own copy but now lord we got it on our phones we have it on our laptop we have the personal copies maybe several versions at home and so we get your word in so many formats and different ways we thank you for that. So speak to us today, Lord, through your word in such a way that we will not soon forget. And I pray that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Proverbs chapter 29, 18, he says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, vision is, okay, we can think of it in a natural way. Vision is sight, being able to see. Okay, so if I can see that door back there, or I can see that table there, or the keyboard, or the speaker, and things of that nature, I have vision, I have sight. Some of us have 20 20 vision. I used to have it, but I don't have it anymore, so I have to wear spectacles to help me to see better. But vision in the Bible is like, it's, it, it means revelation. Okay, that's ultimately what that word means there, where there's no revelation to people, or, that people perish. So revelation is where something is uncovered and we see something that we couldn't see otherwise. And so the, the vision for this ministry is connecting people to God and to one another. Okay, connecting people to God and to one another. That's the vision and that helps us to, to know where we're going because that's ultimately what vision is for. It tells you what you're all about, what you're seeking to accomplish. Now, the vision being connecting people to God and to one another, notice that it is first and foremost getting people connected to God. Okay, we got to get that relationship right. Okay, it's not about just getting them to come to church. That's good. But the, the, what we, the goal is, is to get them connected to God. Because they can come to church here and come faithfully and still not know him. 
So we want for them to know him. Amen. We want people to know God. That's why we want to get them connected to him. Because if a person get connected to God, listen, they're going to be all right. That means they'll develop a relationship with him. They'll spend time in his word. They'll spend time in prayer. They'll do the things that they need to do to cultivate that relationship with him. That's ultimately what we want. We don't want to get them connected or attached to us in such a way to where they depended upon us. Of course, when they first get saved, they will be because they just don't know. But the goal is to get them to grow, to disciple them, and teach them how to walk this thing out. And so then they can make disciples themselves. So the vision is connecting people to God and to one another. And let me tell you what a vision does. In a general sense, a vision does at least three things. And one of it, it gives direction. Because if you know what you are trying to accomplish, you know where you are going. I know that since we're connecting people to God and to one another, that means we got to go where people are not connected to God. And so that's why we're not fishing in another church. We're not going, I mean, I'm not trying to go get people out of other church. They all right, they in church, that's good. I want the one that's, that's not in church. I want the one that's out there in the street on the corner. I want the one that's living under the bridge. I want the one that's in the woods and living in the tent. I want the one that's got the business suit on but don't know Jesus. All right, I want that one. I want those people. That's what I want. To, it's a whole bunch of people out there that we can reach out to and share the love of Jesus with. Matter of fact, when I came in this morning, I seen a young man. He had a suit on. He had a towel. Looked really nice. I said, "Man, you looking good this morning, man. You looking good." And just to show you my age, I remember back when I was in high school, ZZ Top had a song talking about uh, every girl's crazy about a sharp dressed man. And I'm not trying to promote lust and all that stuff, but I'm talking about how a sharp dressed man strikes you different. And so he was looking good. I told him so. We struck up conversation. Come to find out, he's a drummer. He attends church here in Goldsboro. He lives in Kenston. He plays for a group. And we just had a really good time talking and conversating, exchanged numbers. So now I can contact him. He can contact me. And it's all for the purpose of building a relationship. And I'm not trying to get him to leave this church and come here. But I want to connect with him because there's no telling what God can do down the road as we build relationships with one another. And out of that, let me go ahead and point this out. This is what I can say about that, is that I reached out to him because I want to build a relationship with him because God is all about connecting people. We're a body. There's only one body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We may be going to different churches. We may live in different places, but there's only one body. And so we're all connected to one another. And that means I'm not competing against anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. I'm not going to compete against them because if they're doing the will of the Lord, man, run on. Praise God. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to try to help you any way I can. Yeah. I'm not going to run behind you, stab you in the back, try to undermine you and slander you and all that. That's, that's kept. That's hurt ourselves. Amen. So a vision does, three, it does at least three things. And the first thing it's going to do is going to give us direction. Another thing that a vision does is it sets boundaries. Because I know what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm not what I'm trying to accomplish. I know what we're, we're seeking to accomplish. That means there's some things that we can't do. Because I know that if I'm trying, if I'm wanting to do this, if I'm trying, if I'm seeking to get a degree in clinical counseling, that means I can't work on a doctorate in med in, in the medical field. I can't do those. I mean, there's people that do that, but. A vision gives me boundaries and, to, and gives me the limits that I need to accomplish what I'm seeking to accomplish. It sets boundaries. I can't do everything. We're limited. The ministry is no limits because God is able to do all things. Amen. But guess what? You and I, we're limited. That's right. I cannot be everywhere all the time. I need rest. I need sleep. I need to eat. Okay? I get, I, and as you can tell, sometimes our voice go out because we yelling and hollering and screaming and all. So a vision sets boundaries. It shows us what we need to do and what we need not, need not to do. Let me give you a third thing what a vision does. A vision rallies resources. Now listen to this, this is real thing. A vision rallies resources because part of, I said the vision is connecting people to God. And so we reached out and did a back to school back to your way because we want to know people, God, let people know God loves you. Yeah. You have a plan and purpose for your life. Yeah. And so here's yeah. how we're gonna demonstrate the love to you. We're gonna put some, something in your hand to help you on, on your way in school. Right. So we reached out to some people. They heard the vision, they understood, and so guess what? Resources came. Matter of fact, they still coming. Yeah. Okay, so we gotta find somebody else to get some bags to. We're gonna figure it out this Amen. week. Amen. I mean, we'll knock on the doors of the schools or somewhere. We're gonna, we're gonna help some more children out. Amen. Because God loves those children. Jesus said it like this here. He said, Let the children come unto me. Yeah. 
For us, such is the kingdom of God. God. Amen. Now, um, the vision that we have for this ministry, as I've already said, I'm okay, thank you. Um, that I've already said is connecting people to God and to one another. And so, if that's the vision, then we need to understand, well, how is that going to be accomplished? Well, it's going to be accomplished, I'm going to give you three ways. It's going to be accomplished by worship. It's going to be accomplished by discipleship. And it's also going to be accomplished by evangelism. Amen. Now, let me open that up a little bit more. Worship is this, what we do corporately. When we come together in a setting like this, and we sing songs and we just worship together. But it's also private. Right. Yeah. It's what you do at home. Yeah. It's, it's what you do when you're cooking in the kitchen or when you're brushing your teeth in the mirror. It's what you do when you're driving, you're driving to your job and you, yeah. or you're going to the grocery store. It's, it's an attitude of worship where we're just adoring the Lord. Yeah. Now, I'm praying for God to help me understand more practical ways of worship, what worship is. Because the Old Testament had physical acts that they did yeah. to worship God. They would bow down. Some would lay prostrate. They would offer up an animal as a sacrifice, and that was their way of worship. But we don't have to offer a sacrifice today. Amen. We can still lay prostrate on the floor. We can yeah. do all those things. But worship is a lifestyle. Come on. Amen. It's a lifestyle. Amen. Where my, my heart is focused on him, and I'm doing everything that I'm doing with a mind towards him. I'm thinking about him. And when I miss him, I'm like, Lord, forgive me. I didn't yeah. mean to do that. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to talk bad about that person. I didn't mean to, you know. And so it's, worship is a lifestyle. That's, that's a good place to start right there, what worship is. But we also accomplishing this vision by discipleship, which is right now involves these Sunday morning messages. Every, every message that I'm sharing, every message that I'm preaching is strategic because I'm giving us something that's going to help us accomplish the vision. Last two weeks, I talked about prayer. Last week, I talked about asking something from Jeremiah 33 and 3. The word of God says this here, ask what he says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you don't even know. Mm -hmm. That's some things we don't even know, we don't even comprehend, we don't even understand. Right. God said, call me, talk to me about it. I'll show you some stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're going to, discipleship is, is growing to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Growing mm -hmm. to live like him, to walk like him, to talk like him, to be his witnesses in the earth. Amen. He tells us that we're light of the world, salt of the earth. And so we're, and we're seeking to be a, a blessing to the people around us. That's how the vision will be accomplished. And the third thing is this, is evangelism. Yeah. Now, to go back to the back to the school bag giveaway thing, the example there, that was really an outreach of evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we didn't go full frontal and Jesus, 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 beat him over the head, the goal is, is, is looking for an opportunity yes. to share Jesus with somebody. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Now, let me go ahead and give you this. There was a time when you could just run up on people and just, you go to hell if you don't get right. You know, and people will listen to you. You do that now, you can get hit. Okay? <laughs> you might get assaulted. So, I'm, I'm more of the persuasion that we need to build relationships with people. Right, right. Which is why I struck up that conversation with that young man this morning. Because I was seeking to fill him out and see what you know. Do you know Jesus? And as I talked to him, I said, man, he knows the Lord. Okay. And he talked about worshiping Amen. the Lord. And he talked about playing not for money, but because, man, I want to love God. I said, boy, you're on the right track. Go on and do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. But there's other people, I'm telling you now, I'm fishing. Because there was another fella here this morning that I talked to, been praying for. And he, could, he keep coming around, y'all. He keep coming around. He's looking. And before you know it, he's going to be sitting up there. Amen. I'm telling you, he's going to be sitting up in here, sitting right up in here with a Bible, smiling like somebody that gave some money or something. He's going to be cheesing. I'm telling you, because he, he, he on his way. He sees something. Yeah. Right. He's wondering, what is it those people, why, why are they smiling? Why are they being kind to me? Why are they, everybody else will cuss me out. But these people are loving on me and being kind to me. Why are they yeah. doing that? And he'll come up here and find out. And yeah. we're going to introduce him to the master. Yeah. yeah. And once he get introduced to the master, yeah. he's in the car. He's in the car. It's about evangelism. Yeah. If we just got what we got and we keep it in here, it's not going to help anybody. No. Wow. We got to take it outside the four walls. Amen. And that's what I'm all about, about sharing Jesus. As a matter of fact, this is an invitation. Wednesday, about 6.30, I'm going to go, out and go down on Center Street and... Down there on the block where Maxway is, y'all know where Maxway is? Across the street at the corner, there's an upright piano sitting in front of the, one of them storefronts. I go down there from time to time, but it being earlier in the day, and I play, but I'm gonna go down there at 6.30 in the evening after the sun going down, people coming out, going to the restaurants, 
you know. And guess what? It's a Wednesday night, so church people ain't gonna be out there. Gonna be people that don't know the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're gonna go out there. We're gonna sing some songs. We're gonna go out there and just, just, just be a light and witness. And as they come up and listen, guess what? We're gonna offer to pray. Amen. Strike up a conversation with them and see what God do. I believe God will be in the midst of that. We're gonna go out there and do that. So I'm gonna do that Wednesday night, about six thirty, and go stay out there. Ain't gonna stay out there super long, but just gonna go out there and 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 and, and just love on some people and just. Plant seeds, tell them who we are, where we are, and share with them about Jesus, and, and we're just gonna see what God will do. All right, we're gonna see what He'll do. Now, let me I, I, and listen, God. I'm gonna just tell you this morning. I'm gonna be brief because I'm I'm trying to. Uh, I really worked out this week, and so the voices. I'm gonna give it a rest, but I want to share with you the third thing about the purpose of vision, because you can know what you're doing, but not know why you're doing it. Come on. Have you ever done something like that? I bet there's been times where I've asked me, why are we doing this? Because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that we're doing something, but we just do it, do it, do it because they said so. And so God wants us to know why we're doing this. He, he, why are we connecting people to God and to one another? Two reasons. The first one is the great commandment. Amen. Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor Amen. as yourself. Yeah. How many want to go to hell? Then we shouldn't want our neighbor to go either. Amen. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Amen. So that's loving God yeah. and loving our neighbor as I say yeah. All right. I mean, I want good for me, and so therefore I want good yeah. for my neighbor. Yeah. If I don't find something that works, I want to share it with my neighbor. All right? I want to share it with my neighbor. He says, okay, so that's the first purpose for the vision. Why we connect people to God and to one another is because we love God yeah. and we want to love our neighbor as ourselves. That means telling them about this great Jesus that yeah. has saved us and set us free. The yeah. second reason. Why we connected people to God and to one another is because of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus said these words here. He said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He says, go ye and make disciples. Go make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you. But the word is go. That's why we're that's why we're seeking to connect people to God and to one another because in obedience to the great commission. And it has not changed. And it's guess what, everybody? It's not just to the preacher, not just to the deacon, but it's to the body. The body. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're ministers. Each of us are ambassadors. Each of us are kingdom representatives. And yeah, there are those that may know more about it and have more experience of doing whatever it is. But God has called each one of us to be ministers. Mm -hmm. So guess what? There's a fellow that you read about him in Acts chapter 6. A guy named what? Which one got stoned? Stephen got stoned. Mm -hmm. But out of that, guess what? After that happened, there was another fellow named Philip. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, visualize this. I thank you, Lord, for this download. Visualize this. There was a time when Philip wasn't saved. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. There was a time he didn't know the Lord. Then through some, whatever, however it happened, he believed on Jesus and he started serving in the church. I, I can deduce this from the scripture. He started serving in the church and he became faithful in what he was doing. And so he's serving in the church and he became faithful in it so much so that when Acts chapter 6 happened and there was a uh, uh, there was an issue that arose with the, the Hebrew widows and the Greek widows. They, they were not getting a, the right portion in the, in the daily administration. And the apostles said, well, choose out seven men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And let's give this task to them. And so Philip had distinguished himself by his service. And so now when people start looking out amongst the church in Jerusalem and saying, well, who can we call? Well, Philip's one. Yep. Steve is another guy. And what about this Nicanor and this other fellow? You see what I'm saying? And so those guys, they brought those people before the apostles. And the apostles said, okay, you guys are the ones that set apart over this tent. Let's pray for them. Lay hands on them. Pray for them. Okay, they handle it. So now they went and they started taking care of basically the soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. They were feeding the widows. Yes. They were faithful in doing that. And so God recognized each level of faithfulness in Philip's life. So much so that after Stephen was stoned 
and, and everybody scattered because of the persecution, God called Philip to go down to Samaria. Yep. And he went down there and stepped into another role, yes. that of an evangelist. And he started preaching Christ, and people started getting saved. Demons got started uh, getting uh, uh, cast out of people. People were getting healed. God was moving. Amen. But he used to be a deacon. Come on. And before that, he was just a guy in the church serving, yes. trying to be faithful. And God honored his faithfulness. And guess what? You are the same way. Yes. I'm not here because I'm somebody great. I just sought to be faithful where I was. Yes. And God saw my faithfulness and he elevated me. The Bible says in Matthew, I'm sorry, Proverbs 28, 20, it says a faithful man or woman shall abound with blessings. Yes. Shall abound with blessings. And so if we'll be faithful wherever we are, God will give you more. Yes. Because if you can be trusted with a little bit, he said, yes, I I'll trust you with much. You can read that in Luke chapter 16, verse 10 and 12. And I'm giving you the book, chapter, and verse because when you go back and watch this, you'll be able to pull it up in your Bible. Yes. You say, well, I'm going to underline that. I'm going to go do it. That's all right. If you'll be faithful with a little bit, God will trust you with much. Yes. So if we'll be faithful to pray for the time he calls us to pray. He'll yes. trust us with more power. Amen. If, he, if we'll be faithful to tell somebody what he said, gives us to tell them, he'll give us more to tell people. Yes. Amen. 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 If we'll be faithful to give out them bags to them kids, guess what else he'll give them? Ain't no telling. They say, you know, we might have a bus ministry. Amen. Busting people all over the county Amen. into a church where we can preach yeah. the gospel. We're getting yeah. saved yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm getting ready to go off. Yeah. I believe it. I, I believe God is able. Yeah. He's able. Yeah. He's able. Yeah. How do you think T.D. Jakes got to where he is? Yeah. I remember when he was in West Virginia and I was driving from Maryland home one Memorial Day weekend and I saw this big grinning face with a gap teeth on the billboard. I said, who is this dude? And next thing you know, he out in Texas. The blowed up. Yeah. He said, he started out in the church. He was a janitor. He was a keyboard player. And, and Serena was the, the praise and worship leader. And he said, I didn't despise the day of small beginning. Yeah. I'm not yeah. despising the day of small Hey, look here. We looking at what we got going on right now. And we yeah. may say, oh God, it ain't gonna be. But that is a lie. I'm gonna tell you every great thing started out small. Yeah. Every yeah. great thing. Yeah. So listen, you can believe God with me. Listen, I'll tell you now. I don't know if you want to give us a bus mission. He might. Yeah. If he do, we'll do it. But whatever he says, he wants us to do, we're going to yeah. go do it. And we're going to see yeah. God get the glory. We're going to yeah. see lives changed yeah. and set free. Yeah. We're going to see people healed and delivered. Yeah. We're going to see addictions yeah. broken off in their lives. We're going to see God get the glory yeah. because that's what he's all about. Yeah. Jesus said, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, and I'm closing. He said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest. This is why he came. Listen carefully. He said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Yes. And wherever you see the enemy at work, Jesus said, I came to destroy. And you know how it's going to be destroyed? By you and me going. Because he gave us the authority. And he went back to heaven and sat down. And he said, go. Go. I'm giving you my name. Go in my name. And when you go in my name, you speak in my name, they got to go. Yeah. So when we understand yeah. our thoughts, yeah. we understand what God has given us, yeah. it's some stuff got to happen. Matter yeah. of fact, in Jesus' name, and I'm going to speak this generally, but I'm talking to somebody specifically. I'm, I'm speaking this generally, but I'm talking specifically, and I'm doing that because of what we're on, we on the camera, and it's going on the video. In Jesus' name, if we'll go back and anoint our house at all, and we'll yeah. pray in the name of Jesus, yeah. there'll be some stuff broken up all the time, and a lot of our loved ones, while they lay in the bed sleeping, yeah. we'll just walk around and lay our hand over them, and pray. And so, God, we're going to believe you. Break the Amen. Head. We're going to believe you, Lord. We're going to believe you. We believe you're able. Yeah, we believe God. you're able, God. You're yeah. not a man that you shall lie, not a son of man that you shall be, repent. You put the devil on our feet. Yeah. And that's where you're going to stay. Yeah. That's where you're going to stay. Yeah. We're going to yeah. enforce the victory. We're not yeah. fighting for victory. We're fighting from yeah. victory. From it's a victory. different mindset. It's a different, it's a different stance. I'm not trying to get victory. I got it. And I'm standing fast. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes. So Lord, we thank you, we love you, we appreciate you, God. Yes, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise, Lord, for your word. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that teaches us and yes. reveals these things to us. We thank you, Lord God, for enabling us to stand, and after having done all the stand, yes. to continue to stand. Yes. And so God, we thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord God, for the word that's going forth, yes. that will not return unto your board, but will accomplish what you please, yes. and it will prosper in the thing where to you sit. Yes. So I give you all the glory, I give you all the honor, and I give you all the praise, and I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said amen, 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 and amen, 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 amen. amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Give God. I heard y'all praise right there. Give